hey guys welcome back to simtech channel this is chad from simtech now this is tutorial 3 on idmt relays calculations in this tutorial it is said that a relay must trip in 0 0.7 seconds so that is important that's a time that the relay must trip okay for a fault of 10 kilo amps where is the fault the fault is located at a point where the relay is at the network and then we have a 5 amp relay nominal current we've seen that on the previous tutorial and the plug settings are set at 100 percent okay and this works perfectly nice as the idmt relay we have on our screen have already the plug setting set at one so that is at 100 percent plug settings okay now in the previous tutorial i've explained the significance of these plug settings that you can pull out this plug and put it into different uh, tapping and that is going to determine the amount of current needed to energize your relay coil so right now we have a tapping at 100 percent if you want to know more about the uh, plug settings and more about the idmt relays please watch my tutorial on idmt relays characteristics curve now moving back in this tutorial it is said that the ct ratio is of 805 that is chosen and they're asking us to calculate the tms what is tms tms is a time multiplier settings okay time multiplier settings of the relay if a normal inverse idmt relay is used now this is key normal inverse idmt is used now before we move forward please don't forget to subscribe to simtech channel if you like this tutorial and also give a thumbs up and stay tuned for more tutorial like this okay now talking about the normal inverse idmt the idmt relay have mainly three characteristics curve that is a normal inverse the very inverse and the extremely inverse characteristics so they clearly are telling us that in this tutorial here we need to calculate for a normal inverse characteristics now if you watch my tutorial on idmt relay characteristics curve i described uh, in some depth what are these characteristics means and the formula that's involved them so now moving forward in this tutorial here we need to find a solution so we need to calculate the tms what is a tms basically the time multiplier settings that is for the disk that you see there the disk and the setting current together they need to find out how that relay is going to rotate so that's about the time multiplier setting that we need to find now it is important to establish what we have in terms of the parameters so we know that we've got ta okay that is the actual tripping time of 0 0.7 seconds that's the time that we want the relay to trip what else do we have we've got the fault current the fault current of 10 kilo 10 kilo amps 10,000 amps and we've got the nominal current for the ct secondary standing at 5 amps and the plug settings set at a tapping of 100 percent now if you are unsure about this please watch my previous tutorial on the plug settings and we also have a ct ratio that is chosen here to be 800 over 5. now these parameters are important because they're going to help us to determine uh, they're going to lead us into finding that time multiplier settings now before we proceed i'd like to just mention something quickly an idmt relay is what you see here this one here on your screen that's an idmt relay what stand what does idmt stand for well it is an inverse definite minimum time relay why why inverse well it is inverse precisely because it's operate in a counter direction with the current regarding the timing of course so if the fault current when the fault current does fault current here standing at 10 amps when it's going up there by 10 amps the relay must trip faster that one does one here they say 0 0.7 seconds that's extremely fast now if this fault current has to be reduced let's say to 1000 amp 1 kilo amp now this relay the timing is going to increase you see 
so the fault current decrease the timing of the relay increase so it's no longer going to be 0 0.7 seconds it's going to be maybe five seconds even because why the higher the fault current the faster the disk here if you can see that disk there the higher the fault current the faster this disk turn so the speed of the disk is what determine how fast it's going to get to the tripping so and that's also depend on how much the coil is energized so if your fault is higher the coil is energized properly energized then your your, your disk is going to speed up and your relay is going to trip faster and vice versa if the fault current is smaller so that is what an idm relay is used and it is principally used in transmission lines because in transmission line the fault they are very unpredictable you don't know what kind of fault is going to happen because it might be a thunderstorm a, a, a lightning a short circuit anything a bird falling on a pylon or all sort of nonsense can happen and whenever those things are happening the fault current is different because it's happening at different locations so an idm to relay need to be able to react specifically to certain amount of fault current so you can't just break it must check that's why it is called an idmt relay so now moving on we know that we've chosen the normal inverse characteristics to calculate our tms and we know that tms is equal to ta over tc tms is the quotient of the actual time over the what you call it the tripping time so now that we know what is tms ta over tc we got ta okay we have ta ta is here 0 0.7 second but we do not have tc ha how are we going to determine tc now that is a very important question because everything you see here they are going to help us to find our tc the first thing to do which they already hinted us is the normal inverse idmt that is important because that determine what tc is going to be used because tc is linked into the inverse characteristics of the relays so for the normal inverse tc is equal to 3 over log m that's the formula for tc the tripping time of the relay 3 over log m for the normal inverse the formula is slightly different for the in, uh, uh, extremely inverse and the very inverse characteristics now that we know the formula for tc one more thing is missing here m because basically if we got m we can find tc and then the problem is solved but we don't have m how do we find m on the previous tutorial tutorial one and two i showed how to calculate m and we're going to do exactly that so m is the i secondary divided by the setting current what are the setting current setting current are your plug setting times your nominal current so that is that so your nominal current and your plug settings that's your setting current but now what is a secondary current oh hold on don't worry about that we discussed that in the previous tutorial watch the previous tutorial you'll know because we've got the fault current which is basically the primary current so if you have a primary current you have a ct ratio boom you can find the secondary current by using the formula because the secondary current is equal to the i primary over the ct ratio are you with me thank you stay with me then from here you can just basically calculate your secondary current by replacing your primary current with 10,000 and your ct ratio doing a permutation they give us uh, this blah blah and we've got a value of 62.5 amps on the secondary so that's a secondary current of that current transformer now from here we just need to replace this value of the secondary current here into the formula for m and then we're going to calculate our m and that is basically what's going to happen so that is 62.5 divided by 5 times 1 okay 5 is a nominal current okay and 1 is the plug setting that is at 100 percent mean 1 okay and that gives us a value of 12.5 so that's the value of m 12.5 now that we found m you guessed it we're going to take this m and replace it into the tc formula 
and we are going to find the value for TC. Don't forget to give the thumbs up if you find something useful in this tutorial. Continuing forward, TC here is equal to 3 over log M. Replacing the M with a 12.5, we find a TC of 2.735 seconds. We are not done yet because remember our target is TMS and we know what's the formula for TMS. TMS is equal to TA divided by TC. So we've got TC. What do you do? You guessed it. Fill in the blanks. So TMS is equal to 0 0.7 divided by 2.735 seconds. And that gives me a TMS or a time multiplier settings of 0 0.256 seconds. Okay. So this is how you go. The process determining your time multiplier setting for this uh, particular IDMT relay with the given parameters. Again, don't forget to give a, a thumbs up and subscribe to SimTech channel. Until next time, see you again.